Hello, my name is Danielle Marquez, and thanks for tuning in to this episode of Hawthorne's Youth Summer Clinics. On this episode, we're gonna talk all about proper planting techniques. Now let's dig in. We're gonna dig in with our very first plant. This is a blackberry. They do really well in our area, in our Southern California climate. What you wanna do is if you have a container, you're just gonna loosen the container a little bit by squishing it. That's gonna just loosen the soil around the root ball and it'll make it easier for you to take out the plant. Blackberries are very thorny, so I do have my gloves and you're gonna turn the, plate, the plant upside down, remove the base, and then you're just going to gently break up the root zone just a little bit. So we're just gonna make a hole that's big enough to cover the root ball of your plant. You don't wanna to cover too much of the stem or any of the leaves. So once you have your hole ready, you'll take your plant and bury the root zone, the root ball, and the soil will just cover the top of the plant and will leave space for the stem to grow nicely. We have here a trellis, which will train our blackberry to grow along it. Um, blackberries will get rather large and, and prickly, so you wanna make sure you have a nice structure for it. Our next step is to make some small spaces for us to plant some of our corn. So what we're gonna do is I have a hoe here and we're gonna create some little troughs. By dragging the corner of the hoe into the soil and bringing it back towards you. And this is really good for making rows and having a clear space to define planting. Um, you can have a few different rows to grow in. This is also really a great way to um, start seeds but this just removes the top couple of inches from the soil and will let, allow me a nice place to plant our corn. So I did three rows here. I might only need two of them. I'm planting the corn in the back. You wanna make sure that you plant your tallest plants on the north side of, the, of your shorter plants to make sure that you don't shade them on accident. We have here our corn. And so we'll just take it and we'll loosen up again the container, turning it upside down. We wanna make sure corn is very sensitive. So you wanna make sure that you're very gentle with it as you're putting it in. Um, go ahead and make sure that there's enough space, the hole's deep enough for you to place the root, the root ball gently into the soil and then just cover it right up. Corn is self-pollinating, which means it will require um, other plants, other corn to help it along its growth and pollination. So if you plant them three to four inches apart, it will ensure pollinating as the time comes. And we are going to plant about six of these. These are called sun golds. Excuse me, they're called sun gods. Um, it is an indigenous corn to the Choctaw Nation and we are helping to grow these cor this corn and hopefully giving them back some of the seeds so that they can grow more corn for their nation. I love this, it's just absolutely beautiful. Corn is actually more or less a grass. It's fairly easy to grow. Um, the only techniques that you need to make sure of are that you're putting them close together and that you're gentle with the root zone. Um, corn will give you about three, two to three corn uh, cobs per plant. And if you notice that they might need a little bit of structure, um, you can add a piece of bamboo or a stake to it. But I believe that once these get established, they'll be nice and hardy. So we just have a couple more, more corn here. Okay. 
And you can prep it where you kind of stage where you're going to plant and then put your plant there. Um, and that'll make sure that you're properly spacing them. See here, I put it a little bit further apart, so I'm just gonna move that over slightly to make sure that they have the right spacing. We're actually gonna make two small, narrow rows here so that we can make sure that when it comes time to pollinating, we'll be able to run our hands through our corn stalks and then they'll self-pollinate. Um, as, we, as we do that and kind of tossle our corn stalks about, they will release the pollen from their silks. Each one of the silks that, that sprout from the top of a corn cob um, need to be pollinated by a bee in order for a kernel to get plump. So if you've ever noticed your corn on your cob being underdeveloped, it is because a bee never pollinated that corn silk. Um, corn silks can actually be dried and turned into a tea. Um, but without them being pollinated by a little bee, you will have dry, undeveloped corn. So we wanna make sure that along with our fruits and vegetables, we're also adding food for our pollinators. Um, we can add different flowers. That can be nasturtium is an edible flower. Our last little corn will go in its place. And now we'll have 12 stalks of corn, which should yield two to three cobs per stalk. One of the beautiful things that um, people used to do, native tribes used to do, would be plant the three sisters, which is a companion planting where you plant beans at the base of your corn stalks so that they trellis up the corn. Um, and you also add a squash plant to shade the base of your, your roots. So these thick squash leaves from, that I have here um, will create a natural barrier because of how sharp they, they are. Um, it'll give a natural insect re repellent. Um, it'll control, help control the pests. It'll cool the, the soil um, and it will be a delicious addition to your vegetables when they are finished growing. So here's our little squash plant. You do the same thing, you wanna take it out. This one was actually a couple of different plants together. So when you have more than one seedling in a, a container, you just gently take them apart. You loosen up the root zones and you can separate the plants very gently and then you have two different root zones. You wanna make sure that you keep these root zones intact as much as possible. Um, you see how long they are, you don't wanna accidentally break those. Uh, that will ensure a healthy transplant. Um, it's always good to water your plants prior to planting them. Plants love water, so you wanna make sure that you saturate the soil that you're starting with and you saturate the seedlings themselves. So here we have our third and final step for our three sisters, which is planting our beans. You're gonna take your finger and put it to the first knuckle into the soil and just cover it right up. Um, this will provide a nice nitrogen fixing element. The beans will fix nitrogen back into the soil and they will also trellis up your corn um, and will be a delicious trifecta. So the last plant we are going to add to our little plot here will be our brassica, our mixed kale, this beautiful purple and green leaf kale. Um, you wanna loosen it up the same way. You just gently move the plastic around and then very carefully tip it upside down. You wanna make sure as best as possible not to disturb the stem or that root zone. As you can see, you can. this is kind of root bound, which means that the roots have been growing and growing and they need, they're looking for some place to go. So we're going to be putting them in our soil. You just gently loosen that up and then place it right, in, right inside, cover up the root zone. Kale is a rather large plant. It's going to get rather large. So you wanna make sure you give it enough space. We're just gonna add a couple of plants here. We wanna think of the root zone as a ball. So if we 
kind of window our plants and give them a space to grow, they will also be able to develop a nice hardy root zone. Gently cover it up, cover up that, that base of the roots and leave your stem showing. That will ensure proper growth. The roots will grow nice and strong and the stem will stay healthy and strong as well. It won't develop any rot. So now we have our beautiful brassicas, our cool weather crops in, alongside our three sisters and our beautiful blackberry bush. That about wraps it up. My name is Danielle Marquez. This concludes our series on planting. We'll see you next time.